Hello my sweets, welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks in Clip Studio Paint for so that you can um, make changes to your artwork a whole lot more easily. So today we're going to be focusing on selection methods. So we have up here a selection tab and uh, there's some cool things you can do in here and we have here the regular selection methods such as the rectangle and the selection in pen so let's take a look at this first one the rectangle this is the basic one I'm sure you've used a tool like this in say MS Paint you just select you just drag and drop a box around what you want to select so usually it's set on this setting here select new but this makes it a little bit annoying if you select just part of your image and you want to select a little bit more when you try to you overwrite the previous selection and make this new one so if you want to make one box and then another box you go over here and click select additionally select additionally is a very good feature to have on just like on all the time so that you don't make any mistakes all right, the same goes for the lasso and polyline. It's usually set on select new, but all you have to do is click here and it's select additionally. This bar down here has some useful features that we'll talk about in a minute. All right, and then we have the selection pen. So the selection pen allows us to draw the selection we want. So it operates on the same principle as the others. It's usually set to select new, which can be super annoying when you try to select something else and you overwrite your previous selection. So just go ahead and set it to select additionally to make things easier for yourself. And now we can select just by tapping with the pen. Alright, now we know how to select a few diff different methods. Before we go on to the really special stuff, I want to show you this magic wand tool. And uh, this one, I think it's in MS Paint, but I don't exactly remember. No, no, I think that was Photoshop. I'm getting my art programs mixed up. Anyways, this will select um, light colors that are right beside each other. So, say that you want to select the blue of his hair it'll select all this blue right here that's not cut off by a line or another color. And you want to set this to select additionally as well so that you can just click around and select a whole lot of different colors all at once. Now these two, color margin and area scaling, make things a little more interesting as well. Color margin, when it's higher, when color margin is set higher, it means that you will start picking up colors that are very different from the original one you clicked on. For instance, if it's set to zero, it will not pick up much of this black line at all. When it's set to, say, 90, it'll select everything. It'll select the entire image. So I usually have this around 5. Area scaling is similar to color margin. Area scaling means that uh, when you select something, it will add another pixel's width to the selection. So right here, we are barely up against the black line. And this can be a problem if you have, if your lines are sort of fuzzy, because your selection will not um, get right up against the lines like it needs to be. So you'll want to set area scaling up a little bit so that you will actually go into this fuzzy segment. See, now the selection actually covers up some of the lines and when we uh, when we fill this in, we can see that. So, area scaling should usually be around 2, but sometimes it's best if it's at 1. It really depends on the effect you want to have with your picture. So, right now I have refer other layers to select. We can select a layer that's not currently active in the layer bank. For example, we, the line layer is active, but with refer other layers to select indicated, 
we can select the color layout, which is not active. But if you only want to select from the layer that is, is active, you're going to want to click on this top option. And this will not allow you to select the other layers. So now when we click around, we get slightly different results. And it's only possible for us to select something that is in this layer. When we try to select the color here, we only select this that's viewed as blank space rimmed by the black lines. Alright, now let's look at the functions of this selection toolbar which pops up when you make a selection. We have deselect, show border. I usually turn this off when I'm painting because uh, the border is kind of distracting. It is constantly moving and it's not fun to have to look at that all the time. Invert selected area. This means that it will alter the selection so that everything but what you just selected is selected. So let's say that this is selected. Okay, we fill it in green. But if we invert selected area and fill it in, everything but what we selected first is turned green. Next is expand selected area. This makes the selection just a little bit larger depending on um, the settings. I don't use this often. I don't use expand or shrink very often because it doesn't... Um, I haven't found a use for it. Clear, this deletes everything inside the selection. For this line layer, it doesn't get rid of much, so let's look at the color layer. We press clear, and it gets rid of the color there. This clears outside the selection. This deletes everything outside what we've selected, so let's press this and see what happens. We've now gotten rid of everything but what was selected, and uh, the example for this is a whole lot clearer in the color layer, so let's try it again. Okay, moving on. This is the scale up, scale down, rotate, otherwise known as the transform button. This allows us to change the shape and size of what we've selected. So I've gone into the color layer and turned on transform and now we can change side size, move it around and do lots of cool stuff. So when you select transform you'll see this um, bar appear here and this allows you to make changes to the transform settings. You can flip rotate in many directions or you can uh, reset it you can rotate more carefully with this um, little tool here. <laughs> I don't have a lot of names for these things. And um, a really useful one is this button here. If you turn it off, you can now resize it and not keep the ratio of the original image. You can now stretch it in any direction. And a really cool feature is when you hover over one of these squares here, press control and you'll get this cool arrow, and now you can pull on these corners. This is very useful for making 3D effects. Let's cancel all of that and move on. Alright, we saw what the fill tool does. It fills in the selection with whatever color is active in the color picker here. Green hair, yay! This will fill it in with a tone. And this will give you options of what you can um, put into the selection launcher. So I don't use this tool and I might not want to see it around. So I would probably get rid of it. And then we can press reset and it'll go back to normal. So you're not actually losing any settings here. You're just uh, changing what's visible. Like when you go over here and you can move pens and pencils around to a configuration that's to your liking. <clears throat> okay, now we know about the basic color selections, the basic selection tools. Now let's look at this tab here, the selection tab. This has a few cool little tricks and toys for us. So I'll look at this reselect button. 
let's say that we made this really, really cool selection. And then we got rid of it. And then we started working on the picture again. And then we realized we wanted to get that selection back. And we've already done too many actions to use Control Z to undo it. And anyways, we don't want to undo all the painting work we've done. So the reselect button is like a Control Z button for selections only. And you get your selection back instantly. It's really useful. But perhaps the coolest tool in this selection tab is this one. So with this, we can select every instance a certain color appears in the image. But you do have to be in this layer, in the active layer, to select anything. So I can't click and select this line. I can only select colors that are in the active layer. So let's say that I want to select all of his skin color because I want to shade him in, but I don't want to use the wand tool and go bit by bit and uh, shade and uh, select all this manually. Just click on this. It and it selects every instance of it. And then I can just go through and shade it in really fast. So I actually have it set to all layers here. So it's usually set to selected layer, but to make things easier, I've set it to all layers. And to do that, you just have to click on this check mark and uh, select whatever layer you want to work with. Let's try it again with the hair. Everything is selected nicely and automatically. All right, now let's say that I want to change the color of the lines. So I could use this tool, but it's possible that since the lines are fuzzy at the edges, it might not select everything that I need it to. So instead, what we can do is right click the layer, hover over selection from layer, and click create selection. This selects everything of that layer, and now we can adjust the color of the lines. Let's say that we want to select everything. So we click on selection from layer and create selection, right? But if we try to do the same for another layer, it will get rid of our previous selection and instead focus on this new one. So if you want to select two or more layers at once, you would click add selection. And now we've selected this entire image. And we can uh, we can edit color and stuff. I'll explain about these correction layers in another tutorial. Alright, one more cool tip before we go. Let's combine this image into one. I'm actually going to make a backup and then combine it into one, just in case you want to change things later. It's good to have a backup. Then um, to combine everything, we right click, combine selected layer, and now it's just one image. So let's go over to the edit tab and hover over transform. This gives us a lot more really cool transform options. So the trick that I use, the keyboard shortcut that I use most often is Control T. This gives you the basic transformation options. Free transform automatically sets it to this special um, arrow setting so that we can add really cool dynamic effects to our image. Perhaps the coolest tool though 
is mesh transformation. This allows us to move only certain segments of the image. So if we want him to have bigger hair, we just pull on the top and it doesn't affect his face. Alright, that is it for tips and tricks on selecting in Clip Studio Paint. I hope this tutorial was useful to you guys. Thank you for watching this video. If you have an idea for another tutorial that you'd like to see, for example, um, tips and tricks on shading, color correction, or anything else, let me know in the comments and I will see about making it. The character in this tutorial is named Ray and he was chosen in a poll in the last Clip Studio Paint tutorial I did. So if you want to see more of him or if you'd rather see a tutorial with Mira, leave your choice in the voting poll up in the right corner. So again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to be a sweet and subscribe and I will see you later. Bye!